The situation in Lebanon remains concerning. Many people have died in Israeli strikes, especially in the capital Beirut. With me is the Lebanese ambassador to India. So welcome to Vion. Thank you so much. So my first question about um, is the situation in your country. What is the current situation? All throughout last week, we saw visuals of Israeli strikes including in the capital Beirut. So if you can give details, especially when you've just arrived from Beirut to India. True. Thank you for uh, having me. Uh, greetings to you and to your viewers at Wyon. Uh, the situation is very bad in Lebanon, of course. Uh, we are at, uh, at an all-out war. Israel is waging an all-out war on Lebanon. Uh, so far, we have uh, uh, more than 2,000 uh, innocent souls perished and about more than 10,000, uh, more than, yes, 10,000 uh, injured. Uh, 1.2 million displaced, uh, which is a heavy burden on Lebanon. Given that, also, we have these um, about 2 million uh, Syrian refugees also. So the situation is bad, and this reflects the uh, uh, aggressive uh, nature of Israel. Uh, which has been waging this war uh, for uh, twisted uh, and sinister agenda. Um, this, this is pure terrorism. I mean, if we can only say anything, if we can describe anything on this uh, situation, is that uh, this is a uh, pure terrorism from Israeli side on Lebanon. Mm -hmm. What do you expect from the international community at a time your country is facing this situation? The international community is our uh, only uh, aim and our only uh, uh, side to, to talk to and to ask them to stop this uh, madness from Netanyahu. Uh, the international community has also to, to be responsible to, uh, uh, to be responsible and uh, play an important role in de-escalating the situation in, uh, in, the, in the region. Uh, they have, of course, there are uh, many uh, good offices and negotiations going on, but uh, they have been faced with the uh, uh, war mindset of uh, Israel and Netanyahu and his racist government. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about India first, then I'll go back to your region. How do you see India's role? Have you briefed the Indian side about the current situation your country is facing? I have, of course. I'm in uh, uh, constant uh, contact with, uh, with the Indian side. Uh, the friendly government of India has always supported Lebanon. Uh, and given that they have a good relation with Israel and very good relations uh, w with, with Lebanon, so yes, they can play, and they are playing a very good role in de-escalating the situation. Um, we know for sure that they have contacted, but then again, like any other uh, uh, international player or good offices and uh, a peace, uh, a peace lover uh, uh, state, uh, India is also uh, faced with the um, insistent of Netanyahu to go on this war. So uh, we, we call upon our, uh, the, our friends in Indian government to put more pressure on the Israeli government to end this crazy war. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just said that uh, India is playing a role in de-escalation. If you can elaborate on that bit. And also, have you sent a message to New Delhi that India can send a message uh, to uh, the government in Israel, to Prime Minister Netanyahu, to, of course, de-escalate? Have you sent any message? We, we, we can't tell the Indian side what to do, of course. We tell them that we, we want their good offices to, with the with the Israel to uh, to de-escalate the war and to end the war. But yes, they I know for sure that they are doing their best to uh, to, to uh, see peace prevail in the uh, in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, there are roughly around uh, 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 3,000 Indians in Lebanon. Uh, if you can talk about is any evacuation plan being ready, it has the Indian government approached you. And also, there are Indian UN peacekeepers in southern Lebanon. Uh, what is the current condition for them? Uh, the current situation of the Indian in Lebanon, uh, there are, like you said, about three to 4,000 Indian. Uh, they are uh, as safe as any other Lebanese in the country. I mean, uh, of course, the, the, the homes they are work at or the, the companies, they, uh, they uh, also give their... Uh, uh, work efforts too. Uh, 
uh, they are trying to protect them in the same way that they protect themselves. So uh, hopefully they will be safe. Uh, there's no yet any campaign to uh, evacuate them from Lebanon. Uh, Indian government hasn't approached us for that specific reason. Hopefully we'll not reach that point. But we want to see the war stop. Mm -hmm. And Indians in the UN and, and For the UNIFIL, this is the, the good part and the, the beautiful face of India. Uh, India has always been investing in, in peace. Uh, so the, I think the biggest uh, contingent in UNIFIL, the peacekeeping forces in Lebanon, is Indian. You have about uh, 900 to 1,000 uh, peacekeeping personnel. And they are doing a great job. They are very much admired and appreciated in Lebanon. And again, on, the behalf, on behalf of my government, I extend uh, my appreciation and, thankful to, and thanks to the uh, government of India. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back uh, to the situation in um, broader West Asian region, uh, we know there was a plan for ceasefire, uh, the French and the American proposal for ceasefire. Uh, what was the status? Uh, is the proposal now dead? And uh, had uh, the Hezbollah chief agreed to it? Uh, the, the, uh, this proposal was botched by, by Netanyahu himself, and uh, yes, there was a, a peace, uh, uh, almost, I mean, uh, a ceasefire agreement. Uh, our government has uh, announced its acceptance to the proposal uh, by the French and the, uh, the American, and it was almost about to happen, but uh, it turned out that it was a plot by the Israeli government and by Netanyahu, the war criminal uh, Netanyahu himself, uh, to, it's part of a plot to assassinate Nasrallah, and it was botched, yes, it mm -hmm. was gone. Mm -hmm. Now there's, uh, I, of course, there's always talk to, uh, to end this crazy war, uh, but uh, so far there's no um, uh, light at the end of the tunnel so far. Mm -hmm. Any direct conversation happening between the Lebanese government and the Israeli government about the current situation, how to handle it? There's no direct uh, contact with the Israeli government, but there's indirect, of course, indirect contact through uh, our friends, uh, like you said, the, the U.S., the French, the other European, and uh, yeah, of course, there, there are some uh, talks, they're always there, it's mm -hmm. always there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this current situation, the war that is happening in your country, can become a larger, broader conflict in the region which can escalate uh, beyond the borders uh, and can involve other countries? There is serious concern, of course. There is serious concern that uh, we, uh, the, the, the war w would uh, escalate and uh, we're, almost, uh, we're almost at an all-out war. Mm -hmm. But the escalation is always there and yes, there is a big chance, unfortunately, that uh, this war might uh, even escalate further. Mm -hmm. B due to the... Um, the, like I said, the war, uh, the, the, the war mindset of, uh, of Netanyahu and uh, the current uh, Israeli uh, government. Uh, we are here, uh, dear Sidan, because uh, Israel has not been held accountable for all its war crimes since its uh, creation. Mm -hmm. Israel has always been at the offensive side, at the expansion side, this expansionist uh, theme of Israel, expansionist uh, doctrine, uh, has to end, has to finish. It's very dangerous to the country and to Israel itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that Lebanon-Israel uh, war, the relationship, has been tense not just last few years. This is something that has been happening since decades. Now, essentially, in this entire war conflict that is happening, what role do you see Hezbollah has? Because uh, Hezbollah is a resistance force for Lebanon. Hezbollah is a terror group for Israel. Hezbollah is a non-state actor for many countries. It's, it's supported by countries uh, beyond your border. It's supported by Iran. So if you can put in place the role of Hezbollah in your country. Of course, this is a debatable question and debatable issue. But yes, Hezbollah is a Lebanese party. They are Lebanese. The, all the members of Hezbollah are Lebanese. Uh, when it comes to domestic politics, Hezbollah plays by the rule of the Lebanese political system. Uh, so th there is no issue on that. And at the same time, Hezbollah is a resistant group because the, our land is occupied. And if you remember, Hezbollah was only created in 19, uh, was only established in 1982 when Israel invaded Lebanon. So had there not been an invasion to Lebanon, we might not have seen Hezbollah created. So any occupation calls for resistance. 
so the resistance and, and the resistance in Lebanon to the Israeli occupation started long before Hezbollah. So Hezbollah was not the only resistance group in uh, in Lebanon. But maybe because during the I mean the the years and because of the demographic composition of Lebanon uh, and geographical area, uh, that's why maybe Hezbollah has lasted more. And now Hezbollah is the main resistance group. But again, not alone. Uh, it's not secret that it's not a secret that um, Hezbollah gets uh, the support, full support from Iran. Uh, but as as uh, a resistance group, they are Lebanese resistance group, and as political party in the uh, within the government and the parliament, they are represented there. They are they play by the rules, and they are a Lebanese political party. What's the plan for implementing uh, the UNSC resolution 1701? Because one of the key point is that all non-state actors need to shun a weapons violence. What's your assessment on that? Will it be implemented by Lebanon? I know the point is also implementation from Israeli side as well, but what actions the Lebanese government plan to take? Uh, 1701 was uh, issued in 2006 that stopped the war uh, also, uh, again, another war uh, from Israel uh, into, uh, on Lebanon. Uh, so we, we are ready currently, since they established uh, this is the issuance of this 1701 resolution, we have been called, for, we have been calling for the fully, uh, full implementation of 1701. We are ready, currently we are ready, and we announced this many times to the international community, that we are ready to apply and to fully implement 1701 with all its items. The issue that you need the other party to, uh, to abide by 1701. So Israel is the, is the party who is violating 1701 by violating our uh, airspace, our land, our sea. They are, they are violating 1701 since uh, its issuance. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you said that you are willing to abide by the resolution. Uh, does it include defanging uh, in terms of weapons Hezbollah has? Does every, it include that? Every item of 1701 we are ready to, to implement. And there was agreement, uh, there has been this agreement from all parties of Lebanon, including Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, we also saw the pager attack. Uh, now, this is something that was not only grabbing the international headline, but also shocking in many ways because it included the supply chain being uh, essentially hijacked. What are your investigations saying? Who is responsible for the pager attack? Uh, first, this is a, a massacre. This is uh, unacceptable uh, ethically and humanitarian. I mean, it's, it's a war against humanity. It's a war crime. And it's not, by the way, an advent by, from the Israeli. It was considered before, and I read reports that uh, even the American considered uh, using this, this uh, same uh, plot in Afghanistan, but they refrained because they were afraid that many innocent lives would, would uh, also be affected. Uh, and this is what happened in Lebanon, actually, because patients are not only with Hezbollah oper operators. The, the doctors use uh, them, uh, nurses, social workers, and uh, many of these uh, categories have uh, either lost their lives or have been inflicted with uh, major injuries. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's, the, the investigation is still going on, and uh, I mean, there is... Uh, Maybe no just single report about the investigation, about the result of the investigation, but it's, it's clear enough that uh, Israel is behind this uh, war crime. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any proof? And if you have any proof, will you present it to uh, international uh, Everyone, community? I mean, so, some, some things, they are very clear. They're too clear to, to, have a, to need a proof. But uh, no, I don't have a proof. But uh, maybe this is the, the only th uh, war crime that they did not claim. But, uh, but Obviously, and everyone knows that Israel is behind this. My point of asking this question that do you have proof is that if you have a proof, you can put it in front of the international community and clearly say that... We have enough proofs about this or other war crimes, and there have been, of course, uh, put in front of the uh, international community and asked them to take responsibility to uh, hold Israel responsible for all war crimes. There are lots of uh, complaints from Lebanon side to the United Nations, to the General Assembly. So, yeah, there are lots of them, and uh, uh, Israel has uh, lots of war crimes to, uh, for, for us to, to sue and to follow. So, when it comes to Hezbollah, uh, now uh, the chief has been killed in an Israeli strike. What next for Hezbollah? Do you see new leadership? Because it looks like that the group, the political party, as you say, and as the Israelis say, the terrorist group, 
doesn't have any leadership left to do anything. Do you think that no, there will be I, I, leadership? I'm not an expert on Hezbollah. I don't know how their uh, system works, but uh, as a resistance group in all over the world, they never die if you eliminate uh, their head. If, uh, if the head of any resistance group uh, was eliminated, then another one would replace, because the, uh, the process of, of uh, liberating uh, occupied land will continue. So whether with Hezbollah or any other resistance, we will not allow Israel to occupy our land, and we will fight till we liberate our land, and to stop this encroachment and to stop the Israeli aggression against Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no question about that. Uh, with Hezbollah or, or any other resistance group, we will fight against Israel when it, uh, and this, this, is the, uh, this has been the uh, fact uh, and the, the nature thing to Israel to attack Lebanon and attack all its neighbors. That's why they are left with no friends in the region, mm -hmm. because of their, of their twisted religious doctrine of, of greater Israel and promised land. And this is, this is a madness, and this has to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've counted how the situation has deteriorated in terms of the toll as well, the death toll increasing in your country. Uh, you must be needing humanitarian support. Are you getting any humanitarian support from the international community? And what kind of humanitarian support would you require? Have you reached out to India? Is India sending any humanitarian uh, support to your country? Yes, sure. We, we are getting uh, lots of humanitarian support from all our friends. We have lots of friends in the world. And India is one of, the, of our best friends also. India has rushed always. I remember during COVID uh, pandemic, India has rushed to help Lebanon and to send the humanitarian aid, medicines, and others. Um, currently, yes, India also has uh, voluntarily uh, proposed uh, to send medicine. Mm -hmm. There is currently a big consignment of medicine we are arranging for to be sent to Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So India has always been, like I said, investing in peace and in humanitarian aid, and that's uh, very much appreciated by my government. Mm -hmm. Any plans for the leadership or the foreign ministers to hold conversation? Um, there's always this plan. I mean, of course, the, the uh, communication is, uh, is always there. Uh, currently, there's no official I mean, uh, statement about that, but we'll inform you when, mm -hmm. when there will be. So we talked about international community. Now, talking just about your region, your neighborhood, do you see a divided neighborhood? Do you feel that the Arab world is silent when it comes to the situation in Lebanon. Yes, there have been comments coming. We saw at the UNGA as well, uh, there were foreign ministers who talked about it actually went viral. But do you see the support not at that level as you might have expected? No, I believe that they are doing uh, their best, their utmost. They are trying what they can do. But, uh, but what happened is that they know that even the U.S. themselves, who, are, who have the the greatest sway on Israel, they said, many officials, American officials said that we, can, we have no control over Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. So if the American themselves cannot control Netanyahu when, uh, when he uh, goes with this all crazy war, then I, I believe that uh, the, Arab, the other countries in the region would say, I mean, uh, would, would, there's nothing much in their hand to do if the American themselves cannot. But we still, ho we still have hopes that uh, with, with the international pressure, on uh, racist and, and criminal Netanyahu that will, will end this war. Mm -hmm. So at a time when situation remains very dangerous in Lebanon, what about the Palestinian cause? Because uh, essentially the crisis in West Asia is about the Palestinian cause and this is something that uh, the Islamic countries have been raising and the international community have also been raising while of course there has been considerable support for Israel. So what happens to the Palestinian cause? Do you see a viable state of Palestine happening in your and my lifetime? Very good question. The, the main cause, if we look at the main cause of, the, of all this uh, situation that we are currently uh, facing, is because of occupation. Occupation is the root cause of all evils in our region. And the only solution is to apply the two-state uh, resolution. Uh, everyone, every state in the world is with this resolution. They all call for two-state resolution. But the only state that's against this is Israel. And unfortunately, the, the Palestinian state does not exist because of this state that they think that they are above all international law. 
above the international community, and they wouldn't heed to any advice. Mm -hmm. So uh, unless we have this uh, resolution, unless we have a state, a viable state, sovereign state to the Palestinian, the situation, I'm afraid, will, will keep on going, uh, escalating, and um, we'll see uh, war every now and then. Mm -hmm. But then again, let me correct something. The, the Palestinian issue is not an Islamic issue mm -hmm. alone. It's, it's a humanitarian issue. It's the world issue because there's a, 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 a people that who, who is deprived from their land, deprived from their uh, rights, deprived from their right to live, to, to go to school, to live in dignity. So it's not uh, only an Islamic issue. Mm -hmm. It's the world issue, and the world community should put efforts to see a Palestinian state exist. Mm -hmm. Um, so, final question uh, is not about the government-to-government -government engagement when it comes to India and Lebanon, mm -hmm. but here in India, since the killing of Hezbollah chief, we have seen uh, particularly the Shia community holding um, marches, uh, whether it is in Jammu and Kashmir, whether it's in Lucknow, or whether it's here in Delhi, Indian national capital. We, in fact, saw an event where the Iranian and the, Le uh, the Palestinian ambassador was also present. So how do you see these marches, these support for Hezbollah chief here in India? Not only for Hezbollah chief, I've seen uh, even uh, since 2023, October 23, when uh, the war on Gaza happened, uh, many Indian, not only Shia, uh, common Indian from all sects, from all walk of life in India, from all uh, 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 geographical area in, in India, they have um, uh, uh, went to the street and they have demonstrated, they have shown their support to Palestine. I know for sure that there is this aggressive campaign from the Israel side in India, unfortunately, uh, where they spread fake news and propaganda, and they, um, uh, they fabricated the news against Palestinians, against Lebanese, against the Arab in general. But at the end of the day, the common Indian who just read history and who knows the, the root cause of the problem, they would know that the right is on our side and we are on the right side of history. That's why they support us, despite this, the, the, the millions of dollars that are being spent here and the, uh, the electronic army that's uh, spreading fake news in India. Uh, I know for sure that um, uh, the common Indian will know the truth and will know who is the aggressor and who is the oppressed. And do you think Lebanon is on the right side of, of the course, history? Of course, we are on the right side of the history. We are, uh, we are uh, I mean, uh, defending our land. We are not... Uh, uh, Israel is the occupier state. Israel uh, is the one who does not accept uh, any uh, uh, international norm, does not abide by international resolutions. So yes, of course, we are on the right side of the history, and they are on the offensive side. Mm -hmm. On that note, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. It was lovely and pleasure speaking to you at a time, of course, your country is facing the thank current you situation. Thank you so much, and uh, looking forward to seeing you again in better situation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.